Hi guys, Pepper Brown here once again. And just a little blog today, just a review of some stuff. Um, a lot of guys have been looking at the practice video of me just picking on one string. That's an over an hour long video, but that's a really a good exercise, you know. Just do this every night. You know, I tell all my students every night, at least five or ten minutes. If you just do this, do the next string. next string and you're trying to do the thumb and first finger to develop your scalpel picking so many students do this you know which is not what we're trying to develop we're trying to develop the thumb and first finger like this right so in and out like that right and everybody goes like this you know I have to correct them a million times so you got to watch that but anyway here's some ideas if you do this on one string this is the best exercise you can do just doing this, keep your all your muscles working. So you just take it, get creative with it, okay? Go up a scale, like, let's take an E major scale. Right, and if you, for those of you who don't know what an E major scale, whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, link, whole step, whole step, half step. So you're just gonna go with major scale. There's a four finger stretch there, so you're just gonna do this. To alleviate the boredom of just doing this is all this is, okay? This isn't a left hand exercise yet. This is just this. So we're going. And just try to get comfortable with it, you know? The trick is you gotta do this stuff a lot. You gotta practice a lot to get to retain your skill. Do that for a few minutes and then move up the scale. Always trying to get the motion tighter and tighter here, like this. See? Go up the scale again. Now you gotta go two whole steps. You gotta stretch. I see how I'm not I'm not doing any of that, I'm just doing this. I don't have an extreme swan going here. I gotta, you wanna try to, for a flat forearm like this, right? So you try for as flat as possible. A little slight curve is okay. So you wanna go up the skill. That's one exercise. Everybody's always, everybody's always emailing me or posting comments saying, well, shouldn't we use a metronome? Shouldn't we use a metronome? What about a metronome? You ever talk about a metronome? I, go, I talk about metronome in like a dozen different videos. But yeah, if you want to get a metronome out, start using metronome timing. But you want to download the matrix of rhythms, matrix of ratios off my website and use the rhythms on there. You know, you've got quarter notes. Eighth notes. And then you go into triplets. And sixteenth. And five eight. That's really hard to do for a lot of people. Five eight, okay? So Take this exercise, okay, and then get creative with it. Go up the scale. Now, you can also go up the E minor pentatonic scale, which is a lot of fun. You can... So there's right hand, some right hand ideas. Next is you go alternate picking on adjacent strings. So you play this E7 sus4 chord. Not this, not E minor, E7 sus4. And you just go down strokes in all directions like this. Do that for a while, then once you get it down, do up strokes.
Once you get that done, go down up like this. Okay, so by the nature of the fact that you have to travel, you do have to move the wrist a little bit. You can still work on your scalpel picking, but you do have to move the wrist a little bit. But it's all going to be up to you to decide. My whole philosophy is to avoid this hardcore stiff arm picking. And that's a whole other style. That's, I guess, the old flat picking style. You know, the Doc Watson flat picking style. Hold the pick flat and move your arm. That requires an extreme amount of effort, but it's, it's, it's good for acoustic if you have an unamplified acoustic if you want to play really loud. And that's why it got developed is because a lot of those guys who started doing that didn't have amps and they didn't have electrics. So they had to have this huge arm picking. <clears throat> and it's still used today, but really, if you have an amp and a guitar, let the amp do all the work, you know. Be light with your technique, right? You, know, you don't have to muscle down so much because you can get your amplifier to do the work. Okay, so here's this one. We're going to go down up like this. So if you go to the website and download the uh, daily practice routine, these are all in order on the daily practice routine. And this one is the module one, picking exercise on non-adjacent strings. So we're just going to go non-adjacent skipping strings. So six, four, five, three, four, two, three, one. Now so many millions of guys have problems coming back because they're, they don't have the forward motion down quite yet. So may I suggest just do the forward motion for about three days like this. And then stop and then the forward motion again. So you're just going to practice this for three days like this. You get the idea? Okay, then after a few days, you come back, 3-1. Now I'm pausing here because I'm trying to emphasize the point. So many guys, when they come back, they do adjacent strings. They go 2-1, 3 2 4 3 5 4 6 4 And I have to correct people dozens and dozens of times per week. So I'm stopping to emphasize here. So we want to go 3-1. All right, then four, two, okay, then what? Five, three, and then six, four. Guys, what do I mean by all these numbers? That's the numbers of the strings. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this is the high E string, the low E string. I tell students all the time, thick string rhymes with sixth string. Thick rhymes with six, okay? So we're going to do 3 1, 4 2, 5 3, 6 4. And just do that for another couple days straight. Okay, you get the idea, but you got to practice, practice that for a couple days in a row. And then, like on the third or fourth day, you know, you could tie them all back together like this. See how much wrist I'm using there? You have to. You know, you could do scalpel, but you still have to, you can't get away with skipping streaks without using some wrist. Okay, all the PDFs for all these are on my website. They're free, okay. All right, then uh, hybrid, jazz and hybrid picking. Pick two, three, four, okay. Well, we did this skipping exercise. Six, four, uh, six, four, five, three, four, two, three, one. Now try picking fingers like this. Pick finger.
and try the ring finger. Same strings. Now try both, right? So we're gonna go pick five, four. Now, I'm gonna stop again to emphasize, if you don't have this down yet, you gotta sort of sit on those three strings, sit on them for a, lot, a little while, like a day, okay, like this. Just for a whole day, or a whole practice session on the first day is what I mean. Try working on your tone a little bit, you know. Then after a day or so, you have it down, go to the next set. Incremental practicing, right? And keep adding groups of strings. the pinky into the mix okay so we're gonna st sit on these four strings six five four three and just sit on them for a few minutes idea so you can go across or you can just stay on one chord like a D chord on the string set four three two one or a C chord You can get creative with a C chord, you can move it around. You know, you don't have to do this. I have a few students who do this. I go, why are you using open strings, man? Um, I don't know, man. Should I be using a chord? Well, let me ask you this, does this sound better than this? Um, yeah, all right then. <laughs> See, it is. Now if you go up to a whole step, what chord is that? D, F sharp, G, D. Ooh, what is that chord? What's the G? That's the four, right? D, E, F, G. That's the fourth of the scale, right? It's a it's a sus four chord with a third in it, huh? Ooh, interesting sound, huh? Now what's this? F, F, A, G, F. What is that? That's an F with an added nine in it. The third tapers that doesn't. Okay, then you go up to here. G, B, G, G. G, B, G, G. What's the spelling for that? G, B. There's no D. Put the D up here if you want. If you want. So you're going four, three, two, one, or I mean five, four, three, two, four, three, two, one. Sounds a little more musical than this, right? We 
hope you can hear the difference. Okay, here's the C chord with a G on top. So you got two sets of four strings. So you can play it as an exercise, right? Up to here. You know, make an exercise out of it. Make up your own exercises, okay? You don't have to use any of these chords. You could use a G. Here's one of my favorite ones, G, to a D with an F sharp in the bass. Now that's a D chord with a good old clap and thumb over the top. Or you could do it like that, jazz guitar style. Or you could do it like that and omit the top E or include the top E. Right? So here's G, D over F sharp, and then E minor 7. F sharp, G, there's a good one, okay, how about C, B minor 7, real close, that's this, this note, and this note, that's it, okay, so you're going, Try to go and see. Take the ring finger and drop it down to the middle finger, and put the pinky down here on the second fret, uh, second string, third fret. So you get that shape. So you're going B minor seven, A minor, B minor seven. So you can sound like this. you get there? Well, if you put a capo on the third fret, I'm going to use a human capo here. The same thing up here, what do you get? You get Stevie Nicks, right? Why do you guys think that Lindsey Buckingham didn't play just as a bar instead? tried this and you'll see ah right you can bar it you bar it for four minutes it starts to really cramp up okay unless you're really super strong that's another thing is uh you know when you guys play bar chords a lot you got to look for relief relief when you can because if you're playing in bars uh you play bar chords all night long so like minor chords like an a minor seven everybody i know who plays in bar bands always double bars it to relieve the pressure on their fingers because they got to play for five hours and they got to do lots of bar chords. Okay, so there's that progression. That's for these fingers here, guys, okay? This is just a way to make it more interesting, okay? Let's Jimmy Page the hell out of it now. So we're going to go C, F, G, F, Okay, so you, the point is you can make any chords you want. You could do whatever you want to increase the interest of the sound of this exercise. Or you could just do it if you want. You don't want to play any chords. You can do an open tuning and then do this to work the right hand. So that's still in module one. Jazz and hybrid picking. Now classical PIMA patterns. Classical P I M A, right? Pulgar, indicio, medicio, annular, and classical. These three fingers, they're going to do a D chord. Now, so many guys will put their thumb like this. Put their thumb behind their finger like that. No good. Don't do that. Stick it out here. 
We're hitchhiking to Colorado, man. We're going to Telluride. See the Griffith Dead, man. Come on, we're going to Telluride. You gotta go. We want to be hitchhiking on that freeway. Stick your thumb way out there. But they go Red Rocks. They went to Red Rocks, Colorado. Go see the Grateful Dead. Not like this, okay? Out like this, see? Now you could take this D chord and go up too, like this. You can take the same progression, C, B minor, A minor. Okay, the important, the important point of all this is that you start out with this every night. You just gotta do this every night, guys. Or, you know, every morning, if you like to sit in the morning and practice. But every day, sometime during the day, whenever your practice routine allows. You gotta do this, man. Turn the volume off. You know. And just sit here and just do it, right? You got an electric. Tie a sock around the string so nobody can hear you. <clears throat> watch TV, watch a movie, read a book, read your college textbooks. Always for studying. Always. When you're studying your textbooks for school, do something like this, okay? Because you don't have to really think about this. It's just a muscle memory thing, right? Okay, but if you want to alleviate the, alleviate the boredom, play a pentatonic scale. Double up. See, I'm getting to some cerro picking here. It's just comfortable for me. It's floating. I'm not resting. I'm just floating. I can fall into it real comfortably. You guys have been doing it for so long. Now, another thing is, uh, you could do the neoclassical exercise that's on my website. That's on the fourth fret and then the seventh fret. So you're going. Then you go up one fret to the fifth fret, to the eighth fret. Then you go seven. Double up like this. Turn the volume back up a little bit there. Okay, so then take it to two strings, so you're going. to it, fourth note rather, if you find yourself getting out of sync, you gotta slow it down, so you go, 
make sure it's all clean. Okay, there's one way, and then add two strings, so you go. On. I'm getting a little sloppy, so I gotta slow down. So you could take those two strings and just work a picking exercise. Okay, so the point is that you do this every day, right? And this alleviates it sounding like this. Now you can double it up. It's important to remain relaxed, relax here. You get the idea? Okay, so the next thing you can do is uh Everything you play can be a picking exercise. So take advantage of the time you have available of practicing and make everything a picking exercise. Now I had a student the other day, I said, here's the, here's the A minor pentatonic scale. And I said, can you do that for five minutes? Oh, okay, and he started. For about maybe three times, started glitching you know, like that. Putting this thumb over the top, I go see, see how weak you are. You got to practice it. So take a pentatonic scale. Now back in the '70s or so. I used to listen to just McLaughlin incessantly all the time, and McLaughlin had a lot of solos where he would do lots of super rapid-fire machine gun pentatonic scales. So I practiced the pentatonics just straight up and down as a matter of course, you know, just back and forth. Now you're going to try for your stamina here. You're trying for the amount of time you can put in without getting tired, see? And every day you can increase it, increase it, increase it, and your accuracy will improve. You just do simple stuff like this. Now you can double up on the picking, too. Good idea. I got sloppy there for a second. Reposition yourself. You start to get sloppy. Stop and start over again. Just that exercise alone is so important. Just take a simple pentatonic scale and double up on the picking, you know. Okay, so now, uh, those are just some basic ideas, and look, you know, 30 minutes has gone by already, almost, and I'm here to tell you that, you know, there's so much more to practicing of everything, scales, arpeggios, chords, and this daily practice routine has most of it on there. Uh, if you guys sign up for the online lessons, they're much higher def videos, they're in high def and better audio, and they have a lot of subtitles on them, so you can follow along. And they're also uh, markered, so you can uh, click on the forward and reverse buttons and it goes to different sections of the videos. And we cover everything in the daily practice routine plus the syllabus that's on my website. It's a full 
long, multi-year course that you can engage in if you want to. So we recommend you sign up for lessons online. Go to my website, pbguitarstudio.com. Go to subscribe. Everything's outlined there, including a video on how to take the online lessons. So sign up for online lessons. You get Each video is a, a, the equivalent of a 30-minute lesson. And some videos are 15 minutes long, so you get two of those instead of one as an equivalent of 30-minute lesson. Uh, some videos are 45 minutes long. And that's still, you know, we, we give you that extra. We don't charge you extra for a 45 minute lesson. But some of the, a lot of the videos are 45 minutes long, 50 minutes long. Most of it is 30 minutes long. If it's 27 minutes long, it's still a 30 minute style video. But when you get a, a 27 minute video, I always throw another bonus in on there on top of it so you don't feel shortchanged. But it's a month to month program. You sign up and you just, you get, uh, one video a month, two videos a month, three videos a month, or four videos a month, however many you want to pay for. It's all on my website. Go to PB Guitar Studio, subscribe, and it's all explained there. And I hope to see you on the other side of that. All right, Pepper Brown, over now for now.